state championship football and Idaho or Pocatello rather is looking to become the first team since the new playoff system was adopted in 1978 to defend a state A1 Division I title. Jerry, Pocatello has got the weapons it needs to do it. Well, they do, John, and I think it's going to be Pocatello's defense tonight against the offense of Centennial, and one of the real keys is going to be how well that that Centennial offense can key off of the Pocatello defense. Jim Cutter knows he has the keys, and the thing he's going to try to do tonight is force the quarterback of Centennial High School, and that is Corey Christensen, to make mistakes when he brings his team to the line of scrimmage. Coach Cutter is going to be throwing all different kinds of looks at the Centennial Patriots. He has all kinds of kids that he can use to do that. He has an awful lot of talent. And again, all of it designed to force Christensen to make decisions at the line of scrimmage. And at that point, to uh, be able to maybe force him to make some mistakes as they go to the line of scrimmage and and make reads, call the audibles. And Christensen is a first-year starter. It's going to be up to him to read that defense. Let's go to the opening lineups right now. We're going to take a look at Pocatello. Avery Griggs will start at the tight end. He will also start as an outside linebacker. Well, the only player we're going to see go both ways significantly. Stan Hales, the senior quarterback, small at 150 pounds, but very good and very mobile. One of the linemen at the tackle will be Ryan Ruckty, 190 pounds on the strong side. He'll play inside Griggs and inside of him or the other tackle rather will be Stacy Harris one of the bigger players on the field checking in at 240 pounds in between them Ryan Fleischman the center another senior a lot of experience in this Pocatello O-line he comes in 190 pounds Perry plays next to Harris. He's 230 pounds, very big on the weak side for the Pocatello offensive line, a 6'3 senior. Shiloh Butterworth, 185 pounds. He's a sophomore starting in the state championship football game, had some spectacular catches throughout the season. The other wide out, Curtis Hall, kind of the opposite. He's a senior. He's 150 pounds, possesses good speed, a good possession man for Pocatello. Ben Benavides will be the guard on the strong side, a junior. He's filling in for Nick Balls, who was hurt late in the season. Benavides will get the start tonight. And Jeff Van Sickle filling in for another injured Indian, Jerry. Wade Bell strained knee ligaments in practice on Tuesday. He was the starting fullback. He'll be replaced by the senior Van Sickle. The tailback will be Casey Burke, 165 pound, 155 pound rather tailback. Guy with real good speed, but not a real power runner. They're going to depend on Van Sickle. That injury to Bell could be critical because he does a lot of blocking and uh, we'll have to see how that works out for the Pocatello offense. Looking at the starting lineup for the Centennial Patriots, they of course go with the senior quarterback, Corey Christensen, and he'll have snapping the football to him, Bryce England, number 50. Fairly solid at 190 pounds, and he'll have a big job in the middle. The 6'2 senior, Doug Van Workham at offensive tackle, great size. He's a workhorse on that offensive line, and he works with Wayne Neitzel on the other side at 6'2", 225. They're two very talented tackles, and good size on the interior of that line as well with Mike McKinley and Jeff Pankratz. Pankratz is uh, at the tight end spot, and he moves very well. Out of the offensive backfield, Joe Deathman, a six-foot junior at 190 pounds. He's going to be a key. And then the man, Chris Treadwell. We've heard all about Chris, just a junior at 5'11", 170 pounds. And he's going to make some things happen tonight. And then Ryan Hedrick, that other offensive lineman at 5'9", 180 pounds. Lee Scott, the wide receivers, these are the guys that are going to be catching the ball from Christensen. Scott at 6'2", with good size, 181 pounds. His height could be a factor in tonight's game as well. Pocatello coming onto the field as we get ready for the opening kickoff here from Holt Arena on the Idaho State University campus. We're very glad to have you with us watching State High School Championship football on Idaho Public Television. John Young along with Jerry Miller will be bringing you all the action. The Centennial Patriots of Boise with a 10 and 1 record playing the equally potent Pocatello. really filled up as we take a look at Centennial gathering on its own goal line and number 75 shaking hands with teammates as Centennial 
gets ready to come out in front of the good crowd that's made it all the way out here from Boise. You know, that's going to be a real factor, I think, in tonight's ballgame is the crowd, too. For Pocatello, there's no doubt that it's going to be an advantage, the home field advantage. The Indians play all of their games here. We'll take a look at the uh, officials for tonight's game. Art Watkins is the umpire. A lot of good experience. He's done uh, a ton of games. He, he works Big Sky Conference games as well. Bob Matthews will be the back judge. Mel Hine is the linesman. Mike Nelson, the field judge. And Reed Tucker, who also has a lot of experience uh, in college college football is going to be the referee. Uh, we've got a great crew, I think, uh, not only with both football teams, but with the officials tonight as well. And what a key role they can play. The officials often taking a lot of heat in a big game, and we'll certainly wish them the best and use all their good field judgment. Pocatello standing along its home sideline as Centennial introduces its starters to the crowd. I'd say Pocatello crowd outnumbers. You're seeing them at the bottom of your screen. Outnumbers the far side about two to one. And that noise that the crowd can generate here was something that head coach Lee Newman was worried about, Jerry. He concerned that his quarterback would have trouble hearing the signals and communicating on the line, which we know he's going to have to do quite a bit of to counter the different looks he's going to get from the Pocatello defense. So crowd noise, we'll see if that is one of the distractions that Corey Christensen has to handle tonight. It's always interesting. Well, I guess we'll find out exactly how sophisticated the Pocatello crowd is. Will they know when those key times are are. And of course, football coaches, uh, if you're on the offense, you hope they don't. If you're the visiting coach, the home coach, well, you just hope that your, your team is in it to the point that the crowd is always in it. If Centennial can take this crowd out, then uh, the Patriots will have picked up a 12th man, whether they have a lot of fans into it or not. And they do have a good following here tonight. And as Centennial groups at center field, you can hear the cheer of the home crowd as Pocatello takes its chance to introduce the starting lineups for tonight's A1 Division I championship game. One Curtis thing, Hall, the senior, the first one out on the field. Uh, as, as they look at Curtis Hall, he is the son, by the way, of Idaho State University football coach Garth Hall. And uh, Garth has been under a little pressure this week. Uh, he's been under pressure all season long. It could be coming to a head this week as his team plays uh, Montana on Saturday night. Uh, we're going to comment about the crowd and uh, also it's interesting that uh, and I'm sure that other schools in Boise may have done the same thing getting in in line to support Centennial for the game tonight but uh, the last day or two Highland High School in Pocatello which uh, really suffered a tough loss and a great win by Centennial in the playoffs by the way over the Highland Rams to get to this game. Highland has thrown its full support behind Pocatello and I know that there are a lot of Highland people here at the game tonight. That was a very fine football game. I had the privilege of being in Broncos Stadium for the Highland Centennial game. And uh, the Centennial showed the ability to make the big plays happen as they needed to down the stretch. They got up 28 to 14. Highland came back to tie the game at 28. But in the end, in the final minute, it was Centennial and the tailback Chris Treadwell who came up with the big play to get Centennial into scoring position. As we go to the starting lineup for the Pocatello Indians, Tony Gutierrez will be the starting cornerback at 165 pounds. Casey Burke will be the running back. Burke, as we told you, at 155 pounds, not a power runner, but excellent speed, excellent in the open field. John Pierce will be the free safety, a 6'1 senior at 185 pounds. Outside linebacker and one of the key men that Pocatello will look on their blitz is Sterling Davey at 170 pounds. Chris Coburn, defensive tackle, 215 pounds, very strong and very fast, worrisome for the Centennial coaching staff. Behind him, Brent Harlan, who plays linebacker and defensive end, 5'11", senior, 195 pounds. A junior and one of the smallest players in the interior, Dave Millard at linebacker. He'll be inside next to Squeak Davey wearing number 55. And Wally Waller, probably the best defensive player in the football game by most accounts. Wally Waller is a defensive end. He'll play next to Coburn, 235 pounds, and what's more, excellent speed, an excellent pass rusher. Jeremy Reed plays opposite Waller. He's on the far side of the defense at 190 pounds. And the teams are getting ready now for the opening kickoff. Centennial will be kicking off to start the game this evening, and the Pocatello Indians will be sending deep number 15, 
That is Casey Burke and number 31, Corey Staples. Staples probably will see some action at running back tonight as well for the Indians. And the crowd getting ready. Greg Sloan, a senior tight end, will do the kicking chores, make that a junior. And he will open the 1990 Milk Bowl A1 Division I game, kicking deep to Pocatello. Straight down the center field, a short kick fielded on the 20. And out to the 31-yard line. Jeff Van Sickle's the one that picked up that football on the bounce. Not a lot of excitement on the kickoff. This is where it starts, when Pocatello has to come to the line of scrimmage. And it's interesting, the Indian offense is put to the test first. Well, that's right. I talked to Jim Cutter before the game and asked him if he felt confident enough in his defense to win the toss and then kick off and put his defense to work. He said, no, we want to score first in this game, and it's going to be up to Stan Hales, first and 10 from the 31. Hales will give, no, he'll keep the ball and throwing off play action. Downfield to the sideline, it's Butterworth. I think Butterworth may have had two problems there. Uh, I'm not sure if he was able to keep a hold of the football, but he may have come down with one foot on that sideline, too. Stan Hales right off the bat going to that play action. He, he fakes very, very well. And uh, then he can, with being a left-hander, rolling to his left, he throws very good to that direction. And uh, he just came up a little short on that pass, second and 10. Just over the 31. This time, Hales will give to Burke. And he's stuffed for a four-yard pickup. That was a substitution for Pocatello. Corey Staples in the game early in the one-back offense. Stopped there by Joel Galloway, the cornerback. On that play, Centennial, once the first man got there to stop it, there was plenty of help available. Four Centennial defenders around the football as soon as it got slowed down. That's going to be a key tonight, not to leave somebody out there alone one-on-one. -on -one. Pick up a three-and-a-half. It's third and six-and-a-half from the 35. Hales will drop back and roll out. Under pressure, Kyle Battisti rips him out of bounds and a five-yard loss for Pocatello. They're back inside the 30, just over the 29. Battisti from the inside tackle position a 200-pound senior getting a hold of Hales, and that's quite an accomplishment. Hales is an excellent runner. John, if you watch Batiste, he did a great job coming all the way across the field, and he had to fight through blockers and go around men that were down. He stuck with it. He wanted it. Pocatello, fourth and 12, will punt from the 20. It's a short, wobbly kick. Bounces in front of Pocatello at the 40, now rolling around the 42, and down there for the Indians by number 62, alertly jumping on the ball, Ryan Ruckty, an offensive lineman, and we'll get our first look at that Pocatello defense as Centennial takes over, first and 10 from the 42-yard line. The Patriots have the first break of the game. Excellent field position at their own 43-yard line. Set up by strong defense. And the senior, starting at quarterback, Corey Christensen, with one back behind him. In the give to Deathman underneath, and he's swarmed under by just about the entire Pocatello defensive front. First man there. Wally Waller, number 71. He met him right there in the backfield, and that's one of the assignments that that Centennial offense's offensive line is going to have to carry out tonight because Waller has been in opposing teams' offensive backfields all season long. Look for Centennial to try and run early. They want to prove not only to Pocatello, but to themselves that they can run against that defensive front. Second and 10 and a half from the 42. Christian will give again. This time it's D'Amico in the game. Big room to the right side. And he's broken free and dragged out of bound by the free safety, John Pierce, Tony D'Amico, the freshman. And their speed guy on the counter carries all the way down to the 30-yard line. A 28-yard pickup on the ground, and I'd say Centennial has run. The Centennial offensive line did everything it was supposed to on this play, on the trap play, and then D'Amico goes to the outside. Only the heads-up play of John Pierce saved that for the Pocatello Indians. First and 10 from the 30 for Centennial. The option, it's... Treadwell for the first time, and he's got room. Touchdown, Centennial. 
Excellent scheme for Centennial. Gave Treadwell a big hole on the left side of the line as he came around the end. And Centennial, they've taken that first break and in just a matter of three plays have put points on the board. They call Treadwell their money guy, and he certainly made his value known the first time he touched the ball, going 30 yards with the option, the extra point. David Winder puts Centennial up seven to nothing. The extra point is good, and the Pocatello defense getting some attention in the early going and drawing attention to itself, Jerry, with some missed tackles. It appears they had chances to stop some of those plays, and they didn't get it done. Centennial taking the early lead, and as you mentioned, the Pocatello defense coming up empty-handed. Two big plays on a, on a three or four play drive for Centennial, and the Patriots have grabbed this game by the throat early. Brent Cutter talking to his kickoff receiving team. Brent Cutter, the son of Jim Cutter. Brent was an academic All-American when he played at Idaho State University. Curtis Hall back deep along with Casey Burke, Van Sickle for the Indians. Sloan ready to kick off. We are at 925 in the first quarter and Centennial leads the Milk Bowl 97 to nothing. Greg Sloan ready to put that foot into it again and straight on kicker. This one bounces out of bounds at the 20. That will come back. Second poor kick in a row for Sloan. Flag goes down for the illegal procedure penalty. And now Centennial will move back and kick off from the 35. Well, if those kickoffs are the uh, biggest problems the Patriots have tonight. Illegal procedure on the kicking team, five yards. The Patriots aren't going to have a lot to worry about, but uh, we've only played just a few minutes off the game with 9.25 to go in the first quarter. Sloan now uh, back at the 35-yard line. Sloan a rarity these days. He's a straight-on kicker. And perhaps he doesn't have a square-toed shoe to his liking tonight. And there's the scoring drive, 43 yards in three plays, just under a minute 15. It was Treadwell with 30 yards in the score. A better kick this time for Sloan. It's Burke from the 10. And dropped nicely on the 25 by the Patriots. Ted Nunemaker, and Ted he did a Nunemaker. great job. He, uh, he knifed through there and made a very sure-handed stop. And again, Pocatello with average field position. Burke looking for the seam up the left side, and nobody picked him up. Number 25, Ted Nunemaker. Excellent tackle, Nunemaker. Chance to get in the game on special teams. Not a starter, making it work. First and 10 for Pocatello on the 26. The Indians trailing. Hales quickly to the sidelines. And it's Butterworth with a seven-yard pickup out to the 33. One of the things Pocatello does well, that's that short passing game. They don't give the defense time to get set up. They can eat up seven, eight yards and uh, almost put that ball on the turf and still have the receiver there to get it. They're successful at this. It may be a big part for them tonight if they get in the hole. A little bit of energy surging through the Centennial side of crowds. Things are quieter here on the Pocatello side. Second and three for Hales. And he'll take it himself up the middle. Still on his feet, Hales will turn the corner. And out of bounds at the 35-yard line. A simple quarterback draw, and it turns into a big play. And Pocatello, I think, established itself right there. That one play by Stan Hales has given the Indians, I think, some confidence that they needed to rebound after that Treadwell touchdown. Well, you need your quarterback to take the lead. We're seeing Hale's greatest strength here, perhaps, of all. One of the best quarterbacks in the state right now, and this is versatility that Jim Cutter loves. Good speed, good ability to read the open field, and he's now on the 35 with a first and 10. And he'll give to Van Sickle, big hole, left side. And Van Sickle busts and pulls his way ahead for eight yards. They're down to the 26-yard line is Pocatello. Both Dean Waite. Dean Waite was the first player that had a crack at Van Sickle and uh, I believe tried to knock him down with the shoulder pads instead. 
you've got to be able to wrap a guy up and bring him down. And uh, it was number 38 who missed him on the first try. Charles Burton. That's right. And finally getting the good lick in Chad Longson, number 11. It's second and short. Burke wrapped up immediately by Kyle Battisti. And they'll lose four back to the 30. Battisti doing a good job of picking his way through that offensive line for Pocatello. Somebody missed an assignment, and Batisti's a guy that if you leave him alone, he's going to make a big play. Uh, Jim Newman described Batisti and his other big man in there, uh, Dean Waite, as guys who don't have a lot of size, but they're very strong, and they're very good at fighting off blocks. And Batisti did something right as he puts Pe Pocatello back to a third and five now from the 30. Hales on the roll, wants to run. Stumbles forward, loses the football momentarily. Back there with him, Chad Galloway, number 22. And Hales with enough yardage to pick up the first down as they mark it on the 24-yard line. And it is indeed a first down for Stan Hales. Hales does a great job. He just has enough speed. He slips a couple of tackles and just barely gets that first down. Diving forward with the football extended. And it popped loose when he hit the ground. It's first and 10 for the Indians on the 24, looking to even the score. It's Vance Sickle wrapped up. Number 38, Charles Burton, is the man that led the charge through there. Burton and, of course, number 54, Batisti, who was in on the big play before. And it was just like watching a dam collapse when you looked at the right side of the Pocatello offensive line on that play. A loss of two and a half. They're back. Over the 30, 31 and a half yard line as we take a look at Batisti making himself heard in the early going. Second and long. Single back behind is Van Sickle. Butterworth far outside. Hales in trouble. Looking for Van Sickle. I believe that hit the turf. And Stan Hales doing all he could to get the ball off to an eligible receiver and avoid the big loss. Centennial's defense with the second and long smelling blood. They came with a seven man rush. They brought everybody in. They had four defensive backs on single man coverage and it paid off. Jim Cutter taking a look at the scene and trying to figure out how to move his team ahead on third and 12 Indians deep in Centennial territory. Straight drop. Steps up a little screen underneath. This is Casey Burke. Knocked out at the seven yard line by the defensive secondary. Again, Chad Joel Galloway, number 22. And a significant pickup for Burke's down inside the 10 yard line. Stan Hales, again, the key on that play. Hales with the four man rush had time to set up. And then he got pressure at the last second. And he had Burke breaking free. And he had to uh, wait for Burke to break free. Using a little delay pattern, you can see Burke's coming out late and finding an opening and then turning it up. We are first and goal from the Centennial 7. Hales a straight drop. Over the middle, it's tipped, intended for Butterworth. It looked like Batisti. It was either Batisti or Dean Waite who got a hand on that football and a big play because Butterworth was all alone. There was nobody with him back there. It's uncharacteristic for the Centennial defense, Jerry, to get aggressive. They want to play straight up. They don't want to use a lot of blitzes. They don't want to put men out. Jim Newman likes to play straight up man on man. Lee Newman, excuse me. And uh, maybe they're getting a little over aggressive as they've had two wide open men. It's second and goal on the seven. The swing to Burke on the 10. And maybe a half yard picked up Chet Joel Galloway there along with number 55 Dean Waite moving off the defensive end position. And Burke had no room to run. Again, a great read by Galloway as he followed Burke coming out of the backfield and really cut the sideline off for Casey Burke. Even had Waite not been there to back him up, Galloway pretty much had that play in control. And now the Indians, they're looking at the money play. They're down by a touchdown. They've got third and goal just inside the seven, and they've got to come up with a very big play right here. And right now, you've got to give the edge to Centennial's defense the way they're playing.
An incomplete pass. Greg scuffling with some of the defensive secondary. Nothing will amount to it. And Pocatello stalling on the seven-yard line facing fourth down. That play just a simple matter of lack of execution. Stan Hales did the job at quarterback. He hung in there even against the pressure. He put the ball right on the money. Avery Griggs in the middle of the defenders. None of them got their hand on the ball. He just didn't catch it. Right behind Griggs was Butterworth as well. P.J. Price for the field goal attempt. That snap was way high, and that's what caused the miss. Hall was the holder on that play, and uh, he had to go way up off his knees to grab that ball and get it back down, and he just barely had the ball down when Price came up with the foot, and uh, it, it missed about six, seven yards off to the left. Almost a pop fly. So Pocatello comes up empty in its first real chance. Centennial leads it 7 nothing from Holt Arena. You're watching state championship football on Idaho Public Television. The Centennial Patriots on their own 20 after the missed field goal. Corey Christensen has first and 10 from the eye. It's a give to Treadwell. And Pocatello right there to snare Treadwell coming around the corner. Number 75, Wally Waller. Taking care of business for Pocatello, excuse me, Jeremy Reed, number 75, drags Treadwell down. Well, now Centennial's offense can try to pick up a little more adrenaline from the defense. A goal line stand. Pocatello had first and goal from the seven, and it's still 7-0, Centennial leading and with the football. That was a pickup of seven from the 23 now on second down. The misdirection. Big hole for Treadwell out to the 38-yard line, wrapped up. And a flag on the play. Pierce. John Pierce on the tackle. Probably a face mask as Pierce wrapped him up, bringing him down. Just a great trap up the, up the middle. And who else would you rather have run it than Chris Treadwell? And Pierce was the last man there. And uh, unfortunately for Pocatello, when he got his left hand in there, that was the flag. You saw Pierce protesting quietly. Uh, that wasn't much of a face mask, but they're going to give him 15 yards. In high school, that's the only way it goes. We're going to take another look at it right here. Just momentarily after Treadwell goes busting through the hole, does Pierce get his hand on the face mask? But he gets 15 yards for it, setting up first and 10 from the 46. Back to live action, Centennial to throw. Christensen has Greg Allen. And a nine yard pickup, maybe even 10 down to the 36. The senior wideout for Centennial, Greg Allen at 170 pounds, just sprinted in from the wide side and caught the sharp pass from Christensen. You know, I'm impressed with the Centennial offense. They're trying to keep the Pocatello defense off balance rather than trying to adjust to the defense. They're making the defense adjust to them. And purely what we're seeing here is superior execution right now from Christensen and the rest of the team. There's Treadwell through the right side, pick up a three, and he gets down close to the 32-yard line. Jason Percy is the young man that fought off the block to make that stop. Did a good job. It looked like the hole was there for a split second, but by the time Treadwell got to the line of scrimmage, Percy had slipped off the block. Only a 180-pounder, little wiry guy on that defensive line. Treadwell's had three excellent games coming into tonight, including 96 yards against Highland in the semifinals, and he could go over 100 yards if he keeps his performance up tonight in the first half. Good look at Christensen. This time he'll pitch to D'Amico. And Pocatello with some good pursuit out there. The linebackers, number 50. Substitution in the game for Pocatello. Gary Johnson getting in on the stop. And uh, little or no pick up there down to the 30-yard line. It'll be third and five for Centennial. Just over three minutes left to go in the first period. On the phone upstairs trying to find something, something to exploit by the Pocatello defense looking for a weakness in Centennial's attack. So far they have not been able to figure out how to shut it down. And we've got a timeout on the field. 
Centennial not able to get something straightened out with the offense there. And so the Patriots take that time out. And we have just actually it under uh, three minutes to play. Jerry, it looks like they've charged the timeout to Pocatello. And uh, we saw a picture of the Pocatello sideline on the phone. Oh, excuse me, you're right, it is Centennial. Occupying the Idaho State side of the scoreboard. So it was Centennial wanting to regroup on third and five. The football marked on the 30-yard line. You know, I like that, though. I like that in, uh, in players and coaches who understand the importance of the game, that uh, a third and five play at Pocatello's 30-yard line could be the difference between a score on this drive and not getting one. And so it it's important enough to take the time to make sure you've got everything right, that everybody understands exactly what's going to go on when this play comes off. And a big play likewise for the Pocatello defense. They're down 7 to nothing with a chance to stop Centennial here from penetrating beyond the 30. Christensen goes down hard. Number 43, Chris Coburn with the sack and a six-yard loss. 215-pound senior coming off the inside tackle position. And he was all over Christensen. Coburn came straight through, just fought off a little delayed block. And that punt nearly blocked back to live action. And the touchback. As Pocatello's defense comes through big on third and five, the Indians will take over the ball at the 20 yard line. Mitch Battisti punting through the end zone from his 45 yard line, a 30 yard kick with a 20-yard return on the touchback, and that nets just 10 yards for the Patriots. Batisti getting to know the referee, and Jim Cutter. He knows the referees. <laughs> knows the referees. They'll probably hear from him at some point in this ball game. You can see Hales wearing quite a large piece of apparatus to protect his backside, and this is Staples on a little slant for a five-yard pickup, and he's out to the 25. Corey Staples, one of those running backs that isn't really going to break your big play, but if you give him just a little bit of room, he's going to get you five and six yards. He'll set up second and five for the Indians on the 25. Trailing seven to nothing with 1.56 to go in the first period. Pocatello in its own zone. The throw from Hales. He has... Butterworth on a dive and grab, and that's good for the first down. Again, with the Indians only needing five yards for a first down, and the defense respecting Butterworth, he drives his defensive back down the field a couple of yards off of him. Once he gets seven yards down, he just does the little hook and comes back to the football, which is a six-yard throw, and he's got the first down by a yard. He'll be a real asset in the future. He's only a sophomore, 185 pounds starting here for Pocatello. It's first and 10 from the 31. Hales on a seven step drop. Now he takes off. And wrapped up finally by Chad Longson at the 38 yard line. And a pickup of seven for Stan Hales getting it done on his own. The jersey riding up over those rib pads. And Hales has been the spark plug so far for anything that Pocatello has been able to generate on offense. Well, it would appear at this stage that if the Indians are going to get something done, Hales is the man that's going to cause it to happen. And right now, it's still 7-0, Centennial up. we got less than a minute to go in the first quarter. One back in the backfield behind Hales on second and three. And they give to Van Sickle. And he breaks free, taken down by the senior middle linebacker, Charles Burton. After picking up the first down to the 43, Jeff Van Sickle getting the call late this week when Wade Bell went down with a knee injury in practice. Van Sickle saw enough playing time during the regular season that it's it's not a new experience for him to be out there, but Wade Bell is a real workhorse, and it's hard to tell right now how much the Indians miss him. Jim Cutter felt that Van Sickle would not change the game plan anyway. This is Staples on the slant again, and he's out over the 45 with a four-yard, three-yard pickup, it will be second and seven. 
That could well be the last play of the first quarter and Centennial doing a great job on shutting down the run. You could see the middle linebacker Burton slicing through to take out Staples' legs as he tried to cut through that crossing lane. Jim Cutter shouting encouragement to his team as they trot up to the line, and that is the end of the first quarter. Stan Hales has been the solo offensive threat for the Pocatello Indians, and Jim Cutter finds his team trailing 7 to nothing at the end of the first period. We're live at Holt Arena on the Idaho State University campus in Pocatello where the Centennial Patriots of Boise lead the Pocatello Indians 7 to nothing. These two teams have had such a great history in Centennial, as we mentioned, one of the newest high schools in the state. And uh, Centennial just, what a way to go out and establish a tradition and doing it the way they are and being here tonight. Uh, Jim Cutter's got to find his own way. He's he started his own tradition just about the same time that Centennial did. Of course, the longtime coach at Highland High School then Idaho State University. And it says a lot for him that when he moved from ISU to Pocatello High School, he's been able to do the same thing with the Pocatello program that he did at Highland. Success has followed him, especially on this high school level. And on the field tonight, we're looking at two teams whose growth and success has really paralleled each other over the last three years. You've got sophomores who are seniors now, or sophomores three years ago, who were also part of very successful programs. A lot of pride at stake in this, the rubber match. And it's Hales on second and seven. Escapes one would-be tackler. And finally dragged down by the senior linebacker for no gain, Charles Burton on the stop. And he'll give Hales a hand up. Hales had his chances there. He had a couple of good blocks to keep him up, but you have to credit the Centennial defensive backfield here. It was interesting to note that as Hales went down at the very end of the play, Avery Griggs, the tight end, was wide open out in the center of the field, but Hales was looking to the left sideline all the way, and he missed Griggs, who was uncovered. And now Curtis Hall trying to adjust Hales' shirt, perhaps cautioned by the referee. From the 45-yard line, third and seven Indians. On the seven-step drop, it's Hales. Inside to Burke, he's out over midfield. And this will be very close to a first down on the Centennial 47. Burke quickly into the pattern and a quick hook route, and he connects. It's a good play by Pocatello. Burke got right, right. That's one of those uh, receiver reads where he knows you need six yards, you go six and a half and wait for the football right there. They won't even measure that one. Geno Washington on the stop, but not before Casey Burke picked up the first down. The Indians across midfield as the offensive line gets set for first and ten. Hales will give on the draw to Van Sickle or Staples, and he's close to another first down. Call it nine and a half as he crosses the 40-yard line and gets down to the 37, about half a yard shy of another Pocatello first down. It's amazing all the different things that happen in high school football on offense. The Indians going with a quick set that time. Down, set, the ball snapped immediately, and Staples out of the backfield, able to pick up nine yards. Chad Longson, the safety on the tackle. Hales to throw. This time he's got Butterworth right in front of Geno Washington, who makes the sure tackle. But Butterworth picks up a good 20 and takes Pocatello down to the 20-yard line for a first and 10. The sophomore with his fourth or fifth catch of the evening. Butterworth doing a good job on running that route. He had two defenders flanking him, and uh, when the play was over, they kind of looked at each other like, I thought you had him, and uh, give credit to Butterworth on that one. Hales on first down. No one behind him. Will throw, and it's Butterworth again. Five-yard pickup knocked out of bounds by Chad Longson. And Butterworth drops back to the huddle. Centennial actually had three defenders over on that side in that uh, short zone. But Butterworth again with the short route. And the Indians are 
perfectly happy to take five yards. They don't want it all in one shot. They know they're only down by seven. They'll take it five yards at a crack. And at second and five, the option to run or pass keeps the defense off balance. Hales will throw, swings out to Curtis Hall. First time he's had the ball. And he drops, it's a loose football. And covered up at the 10 yard line, Butterworth signaling that the Indians will retain possession. And we'll get the official word shortly as they unpile. And it looks like Van Sickle out in the pattern as well was able to come up with a loose football. Very fortunate for the Pocatello Indians on that play. Hall took the pass, then tried to make the cut and watch the coaching staff of Pocatello as they see the loose ball. And I think Coach Cutterfield, he'd probably lost it right there. And that is something that Jim Cutter was adamant about coming into this game, that they take care of the football. This is Staples. And dropped down hard by Batiste and Burton on the seven-yard line, a pickup of three. Good enough for a first down. Pocatello again will face first and goal as Staples gets through the right side. Well, the Indians have been here before. They came up empty-handed last time. They had a first and goal at the seven-yard line in the first quarter. They were unable to put it in the end zone on three plays. It'll be interesting to see if they try something different in this series. Now they mark it out on the eight. Of course, getting in tight, the defense can stack up. They don't have to worry about a deep threat. Hales will give to Staples around the right side. Touchdown, Indians! No flags on the field. Big, big play on that by number 77 on the offensive line. The man who came in and made a big block, Ben Benavides, as you mentioned on the pregame, he is subbing in tonight for an injured Indian. And Benavides made a big block that took out two defenders. Staples bounces to the outside, and Benavides just buried his man. Boy, you could see that just inside for the extra point price. No good. He misses his second kick of the night as the referees wave it off to the left and Pocatello comes close but falls short by a point on the touchdown run by Casey Burke. Again, the high snap, the culprit on this missed point after. The Indians missing a field goal attempt in the first quarter with exactly the same problem. A high snap, uh, P.J. Price can't get a good set on the football and get his foot into it solidly with the rush coming on the point after. It could be critical later in the game. The important thing for Pocatello, they've gotten on the scoreboard now without having to score twice to catch up. Thor Connolly will tee up the football for the Indians. Connolly is a 165-pound senior and getting his chance to get involved in the action. A good drive for Pocatello. They move the ball consistently in short bursts, and uh, you just couldn't say enough about that Benavides block to lead, Burks, uh, lead Staples into the end zone. And Pocatello with the hats off, trying to swell some emotion in its sidelines. Treadwell, the deep man on the kickoff for Centennial. And Conley finds D'Amico on the five. And taken down at the 22, Van Sickle in on the stop. As was Gary Johnson, number 50 for Pocatello. D'Amico, one of the substitute backs. And uh, you will see Treadwell, D'Amico, and Deathman all rotating in. That's how they send in the plays. The number of plays on that scoring drive, 15 for 45 yards. And a, quite a time of possession there, Jerry Miller. Almost five and a half minutes. First and 10 from the 22. And this a short one up the middle. Deathman will pick up seven to the 30 yard line and knock back there by the Pocatello secondary. John Pierce, the free safety in to stop the fullback number 44 Deathman who will now shuttle out as Treadwell comes in with a play. Deathman. A great job of following the blocks on this. Some running backs would try to force it and go someplace where there's a defender. He chose to follow the blocker, and it got him about eight yards. Knew the hole would open up. Second and short, Treadwell gets ahead for the first down. He's out to the 36-yard line. And so far, Pocatello has not found a way to stop number 41. That was a pickup of five. 
Treadwell with the scoring play tonight for Centennial on that 30-yard touchdown run on the Patriots' first possession. And you know the Indians are aware of him whenever he's on the field tonight. Line back, lined up as the eye back now with Deathman in front of him. It's first and 10 on the 36. This will be Treadwell. And he got hit immediately as he got through the hole by John Pierce, number 21. But Treadwell showing some power there, Jerry, as he bowled forward and picked up five to the 41. He's only 168 pounds, but it shows the kind of strength he has in his legs to be able to do that when you're cracking into three guys trying to bring you down, and they're the ones that go over backwards. You get the positive yardage after you're hit, a mark of a very class tailback. Centennial has done what it wanted to do at the outset. They have shown that they can run. The offensive line is doing an excellent job opening up the holes. Son, second down, Deathman. Lots of room on the draw. And finally wrapped up after a big game. Number 20 making the tackle on that play, Josh Naylor. And again, he was the lone man guarding the gate. Nobody else had a good crack at Deathman. And Deathman showing some great speed out of the fullback spot on that little trap play. Again, following the blockers, slipping around, going where the play opens up, and he gets to the outside. And Naylor, the only man left to bring him down, and he wraps him up with a solid tackle, but not before the Patriots get to the Pocatello 31. Naylor strong-arming Deathman, who outweighs him by about 20 pounds. It's first and 10 for Centennial on the 31. Treadwell outside. And it's Pierce on the tackle with a little help from Naylor as Treadwell picks up four to the 26-yard line. It's interesting. The Patriots pick up four yards on this play, and yet initially you're impressed on how Pocatello's defense was able to string that play out. And yet it's second down, six yards to go. That's a successful, very successful first down play. And uh, Pocatello's defense has to just hang in there and be tough. The Patriots up seven to six and driving again. Pocatello's defensive line has got to stop getting pushed off the ball. A keeper, Christensen. Struggles for two, he's to the 24. And the lineman in on that play. Number 71, Waller, Coburn in on the tackle. As was number 55, Dave Miller. Jerry, I talked to Lee Newman. He said that early in the season, the strength of the Centennial players was of their line was their pass blocking. Lately, he said they've done a much better job of driving teams off the ball to set up the run, and we are certainly seeing it tonight. The short run by Christensen sets up a third and three. Treadwell ahead for the first down, but there's a flag on the play. Well, you always hate to see that if you're a, a fan of the offense on those straight ahead plays. You're always afraid that somebody's gone in motion too soon. They're talking to Pocatello. John Pierce, the free safety, acting as the spokesman, and it is. Illegal participation is the call. I don't know if, uh, usually that's too many men on the field. And if that's the case, then uh, that's just one of those mental errors by Centennial, and that's a tough one. We have illegal participation on the offense, 15 yards, repeat the down. When you're looking at third and three, and you make a mental mistake like that, and it takes you from around the 25 of the opposition all the way back almost to their 40, and now you're looking at third and uh, almost 20 yards, third and 18, I think. Jerry Miller, I'm impressed. Illegal participation. <laughs> that I knew that, huh? That was a good one. <laughs> they take a look at Lee Newman as his team backed up facing third and 19, going long. And it's caught, bobbled, and then held onto by Lee Scott, the flanker. 181 pound junior got loose in the secondary, and they are about a yard short of the first down and it brings up fourth and a yard and a half. What a play by Lee Scott. The quarterback Christensen put the ball up for grabs. He was under pressure. Scott ran into the jaws of death on that one. There were two defenders waiting there for the football and he just took it away from him to bring up fourth and two. And they're going for it out of the wishbone. D'Amico 
has the first down. He crosses the 20, dropped at the 19. Chris Coburn, number 43, dragging him down. Avery Griggs is the man that's upset for Pocatello right now, number five. He had a crack at D'Amico. He got right in the backfield, got his head into him, and couldn't wrap him up. That allowed D'Amico to bounce off and pick up the three yards he needed for the first down. First and 10 from the 19, Centennial leading seven to six. It's a keeper, now the pitch to Treadwell. And we'll have a clip, flags all over the field as Gary Johnson got knocked down from behind. And it appeared that uh, one of the linemen, or perhaps Lee Scott, Josh Naylor is the young defensive back who made the tackle despite the penalty. He got clipped on the play, still got out there enough to upset Treadwell enough to trip him up and bring him down. So even without the play, you got to give Naylor a lot of credit on that one. Pocatello. We have clipping on the offense. Repeat the down, 15 yards, first down. And that'll back the Patriots up to the 34. Now, how many times can Centennial keep shooting itself in the foot, get down around the 20-yard line, and then get the big 15-yard penalty? Well, last time they did it about three plays ago, came back with uh, almost a first down on the next play. The good news here, it's first and 25 instead of third and 18. Pocatello shuffling the defense. From their 34 now, Christensen all alone in the backfield, throws over the top. It's Greg Allen. Finally taken down by John Pierce with a little help from Millard. But Greg Allen, the senior receiver, again seems to be comfortable working underneath the Pocatello defense. Absolutely, and Allen, again, just like we saw Deathman run before, waiting for his blockers, not trying to force anything, and he picked up probably an extra four yards because he didn't try to outrun his blockers. Pocatello with a five-man front, now with six. And it's second and nine. Christensen on the draw to D'Amico. He cuts and finally dragged down by Pierce who, or by Wally Waller, who we haven't heard too much from tonight on the defensive end. Tony D'Amico, the freshman for Centennial, picking up five inside the 20 back to the 19. And you can see D'Amico, he's an excellent cutback runner. He's got those shifty hips, and that allowed him to pick up the extra three. It's third and five. Christensen will throw again into the end zone. Great coverage by Pierce, but he's going to pick up pass interference. Pierce was playing the man all the way on this, and uh, that's where his problem came in. He didn't even know the ball had been thrown Lee until it was going past his head. Lee Scott, the intended receiver, number 80, was covered like a blanket, but evidently some incidental contact in the end zone. And it wasn't as if Pierce was trying to shield Scott from the football. He was just trying to stay with him. He wasn't aware of when the ball was in the air. And uh, this one will go in favor of the Patriots, and this will give them great field position off of a third down play. So they've given up some penalty yardage. Pass interference on the defense, automatic first down. On the other hand, give credit to Lee Scott for running the pattern that way because a lot of times those receivers can tie the defensive backs up in knots. Centennial giving up penalty yardage and now getting some back. They're inside the tennis first and goal from the six. Deathman bowls into the line at the five and gets stacked up. Six Indians there. And the defensive line, Jason Percy, number 76, holding his ground and stopping that play for about a two-yard pickup. The way it ended up, Percy uh, didn't have much else to do. He had about three teammates behind him, but he did a great job of uh, slowing down Deathman, and then the help was there immediately. Sets up second and goal from the five and a half. 2.19 to go before halftime. Centennial leads by one. Christensen in trouble. The pitch to D'Amico. Wrapped up for a two-yard loss by about eight Pocatello defenders. Good penetration that time by 
number 21, John Pierce, the free safety. Got to hold it to Miko around the shoulder pads, and he looks like he took a little bit of a beating there. Look at John Pierce, the 6'1 senior at 185 pounds. Big for a defensive back in high school. We've talked about Wally Waller on Pocatello's defense, but Pierce is the brain of the Pocatello Indian defense. And he made that play. Centennial looking to score with a minute and a half left to go before the halftime break. And it's Deathman. Touchdown, Patriots. Centennial, after being stopped cold on two tries and going from around the six-yard line all the way back to the eight. And again, they just work a simple little handoff. And Deathman at fullback finds a big hole over the right side of the offense and carries one man into the end zone with him. Very important point here. It's a seven-point lead. Kyle Batisti splits the uprights. Not Batisti, 64, is David Winder. Puts Centennial up by eight as we're just before halftime. The Pocatello Indians struggling against the Centennial Patriots. Patriots on top, 14-6. to six. They're, they're using this draw play a lot right now, Jerry. And Pocatello's defense must be very frustrated right now after making two very big defensive plays and besides having two 15-yard penalties called against Centennial on this offensive drive, the Patriots still get it in the end zone on a third and goal from the eight-yard line. Psychologically, that has to be playing some games with uh, the Pocatello players, but only a minute 27 to go at halftime. We know that they'll go in and be reinforced by the coaching staff at halftime. Jim Cutter does not look like a happy man, and he certainly has reason to be angry. Winder will be set to kick off. It's interesting. Uh, even when Jim's ahead, he really doesn't look happy. Kind of the Tom Landry look usually on the sidelines. I don't know if Sloan, number 85 for the Patriots, got hurt. He had kicked off the first couple times. Now we're going to see Winder, number 64, who just kicked the extra point. Staples and Burke are deep. This goes to Burke on his 12. Has room. And stacked up. By number 49, Matt Jarvis, a starting linebacker on special teams. Corralled Burke at the 32. And Pocatello has a minute 20 now. And we take a look at Burke. Starting at the tailback slot, also filling in as the kick returner. Centennial probably will try to put some pressure on Hales here with only a minute 15 left. First and 10, Hales to throw, Butterworth. Incomplete on the sidelines. Butterworth with the play that he's made all night long so far in the first half, and this time he just lets it go. Butterworth, Butterfingers on that one. Ball was thrown a little low and behind Butterworth by Hales that time. And we have to expect Pocatello to go fairly deep soon. A minute nine now before the half. Pocatello trailing by eight. Hales on the quarterback draw. Out over the 50 to the 45-yard line. A 25-yard pickup for Stan. Stan Hales is the man who has made it happen for Pocatello so far this evening. And again, he calls his own number on a second and 10 play, and he gets it down to the 45-yard line of Centennial where the Indians call a timeout. Now they know they've got a minute one to go. They know they probably have a certain number of plays left, and this is where they start deciding, okay, here's what we do. We'll go with the no huddle. Uh, we'll do this. We'll do that. If this happens, we'll go here. If this happens, we'll go there. They're thinking ahead three or four plays because they don't want to run precious time off the clock. Stan Hales into the uh, discussion here. Brent Cutter's the one that directs the offense and calls the plays for the Pocatello Indians. And here's another look at it. Hales is gone on this play, if not for Geno Washington. He makes some good moves through here. Very elusive style of running. And finally, it's Washington who just catches that left leg and drives Hales into the turf. And we've still got a minute to go. Pocatello with two timeouts left. From the 
45. Hales downfield to Burke. And he's into the 32, wrapped up by Charles Burton, the inside linebacker. Indians going with a no huddle. The clock will stop until they get the first and down chain set again. 55 seconds left in the quarter. 13-yard pickup. Burke, the senior, getting into the offense out of the backfield. No one behind Hales now. He will throw to Butterworth. Alertly out of bounds after picking up seven. He's at the 25. Now in 16 seconds, the Indians have gone from across midfield down to the 26-yard line of the Patriots. 25 yards to go. This is where you start to think about maybe a bigger play. The field gets shorter. You've got 25 yards to the end zone. Those short down and outs become harder to pull off. The defense doesn't have to cover as much ground. Pocatello wants to get into the end zone, and their fans want to see it. They've missed the only two kicks for points they've tried tonight. From the 25s, Hales on second, and three rolling out. Now he fires the ball in and out of the hands of Burke as he gets pushed out of bounds by the free safety, Chad Longson, and back there with him, number 49, Matt Jarvis. We talked about Hale's ability on that play action. He made a great fake to the running back, took two rushing defensive linemen. After the running back, Hales came around wide open on that uh, naked bootleg, and uh, he had all kinds of time to throw. The receiver couldn't hang on. Throwing into tough coverage, Burke hit. Now it's third and three. Hales will go for the first. Back inside, he's inside the 20, and he'll have the first down and signaling immediately for timeout. So with 34 seconds on the clock, the Indians still have a chance to tie the game at halftime. They trail 14 to 6. We've seen them struggle with their kicking game so far. If they get into the end zone, you got to believe they'd probably go for two. Go in tied at halftime. Some anxious fans watching Pocatello wind down the first half, trailing by eight. We've got 34 seconds left on the clock. And the Indians on the Centennial 19-yard line with a first and 10. Fans often wonder, they watch a game like this and they see a team with a minute left to play go all the way from their own 40-yard line uh, down into scoring territory, and they say, why can't you do that on a regular basis? Jim Cutter saying, we're going to listen in now. Little bit of a little bit of what it sounds like down on the field on the sidelines the most prominent sound down there is the enormous crowd filling the Pocatello side of Holt Arena first and 10 from the 19 34 seconds for Stan Hales and he will run again shifting and bobbing his way down to the 12 Pocatello with one timeout left Will not use it. They'll rally up to the line. 27 seconds and the clock stopped. They've got to move the first and 10 chains again because it is a first down. And that's uh, how important that was. And now an official's timeout because a centennial player is injured. That's a break for the Indians right there. Uh, you, like, you don't like to see anybody get hurt, but for Pocatello, there's no doubt that uh, this is going to give them an opportunity to be able to get up to the line of scrimmage and be ready to go without running more time off the clock after those chains are set. And they're looking at first and goal from the eight. 27 seconds, that's enough to run four plays off. We're looking at one of the interior players. I believe we haven't been able to see his number yet, but he looks like one of the larger members of the Centennial defense on his back and now he pops up it's Longson number 11 playing in the safety spot put a hard lick on Hales and paid for it that's what we've got for you there's 27 seconds left in quarter number two Pocatello first and goal from the eight yard line and Jerry you're right with not having to use the timeout and we're going to do a quick station ID, KISU, KAID, and KUID, your public television stations in Idaho, bringing you championship football first and goal. Hales will run. Near the sideline, he's knocked out at the five. The Centennial defense over there. Number 70, Isaac Naylor, along with Burton and Batisti. 
Hales, now what, Jerry, what happened there with, with stopping the clock there, it allowed Pocatello not to have to throw the ball to the end zone. They can try to run it in. They're on the five now with 15 seconds left. Had they had to work some time off the clock trying to get reset for another play, they probably would have ended up having to throw it in from the 10. And they've still got their timeout left. Second and five. Hales looking for touchdown. That's underthrown. He had the man open in the end zone. Longson back in the game, kind of wrapped up with Curtis Hall. Hall was open just for a split second. Hale's not able to get the ball where he needed to get it. And, and at the same time, quarterbacks, the good quarterbacks, keep it low because you don't want any interceptions in the end zone. Only 12 seconds left, and the Indians looking at third and goal from inside the five. And Jim Cutter, you think he feels any pressure right now being down by eight points? The coach is waging a chess game here in the final minute. Third and goal, five yards for touchdown. Hales will run. He'll score. It's a touchdown. Stan Hales, he had the opportunity to put the ball in the air, but he shows his savvy, and right now it's almost like it's the Centennial Patriots against Stan Hales. Getting it done on his own, Jim Cutter breathing a sigh of relief as he consults with his assistant. And the Indians want to decide now, do we kick it or do we go for two? They've called a timeout to talk it over. You know exactly, that's the conversation going on a few pom-poms waving still when Stan Hales went into the corner of the end zone that picture right there you're seeing exploded with red and blue cellophane as the fans enjoying the final minute drive there are six seconds left before halftime well, that's, that is an incredible drive put together by Pocatello with just over a minute left to go in the half when they got the football back and uh, end up going the length of the field and putting it in the end zone with six seconds left. You really have to credit Stan Hales for the way he handled the offense coming down the field. And the Indians got every break they needed. They played for the breaks, they got them, and now they're in a position to tie the game with six seconds left to go in the half, down 14 to 12. And I think you can see in Hales now, Jerry, more confidence in his ability to get it done with his own two feet than to throw and hit his receivers. Certainly down tight. They are going for two and the tie. Hall in motion. Hales will look. Now he throws and it's two. We're tied. Curtis Hall in the back of the end zone. Somehow Hall lost all the defenders on that play. I don't know how he did it. Wide open under the goalpost and three defensive backs, two DBs and a linebacker over in the right half of the end zone, nowhere near him. A great job of running the pattern by Hall and I think Stan Hales has to get some credit here. He looked those defensive backs into the corner. He looked them away from Hall and uh, then he just came back to Hall. He knew right where Hall was going to be all along. Pocatello fans will spend halftime cheering the 14 to 14 comeback tie by the Pocatello Indians. And the helmets raised again with renewed vigor as the Indians have made it happen in the final two minutes of the first half. A1 Division I state championship football live from Holt Arena. Thor Conley to kick off. And as you might expect, a squibber, it's Charles Burton. Solid runner, but no speed, no threat to break it out. He's knocked down on the 36-yard line. Two seconds remain before the break. Well, Pocatello, you know, is going to go into the locker room with the momentum advantage right now. Unless the Patriots come out with a big play with two seconds left, I'm not sure they want to try something like that. We'll probably see a pitch to Treadwell or something like that. Treadwell's not even in there. They have D'Amico as the eye back. Deathman is the fullback. Now D'Amico goes out as the flanker. Just one man behind Corey Christensen. From his 36, they'll try Deathman on the draw, and he's dead behind the line. Jason Percy penetrates, and with that, we close the first half of action from Holt Arena. Tied at 14, Centennial and Pocatello playing a very 
exciting and topsy-turvy first half. Well, it certainly went with Centennial to start with. Pocatello getting the kickoff, not being able to do anything, having to get rid of the football. Centennial coming back and driving to score on its first play. Pocatello's offense struggled and yet able to get two touchdowns on the board, and I'm not sure exactly how they were able to tie this thing up. I come back to Stan Hales. And, uh, and he's the man right now. On the other hand, Treadwell, uh, D'Amico, Deathman, all of the guys contributing for Centennial, they're getting a good team effort. And, and the Patriots need to go into the locker room and not be down. They need to feel very good about what they've done. They've controlled the, first, uh, the entire first half. I felt Centennial had control of the football game. And here comes Pocatello. They had a big emotional lift, as Jerry said, just before the half. Stan Hales going around left end for a four-yard touchdown with six seconds left in the half. And the two-point conversion throw to Curtis Hall has tied it at 14. Both teams now back on the sidelines. And, Jerry, I think Centennial... Back with Centennial getting a drive, two 15-yard penalties. They still end up in the end zone. And, and that's an indication of how well their offense is working. They've had uh, third and 18 and first and 25 on the same drive on two different sets of plays. And uh, they came back from both and got it into the end zone. Their offense, I have to feel, is confident. As you mentioned, the Centennial defense, well, they need to find a way to stop Hales and the Indians. And we have to turn in that direction, please. Centennial Saturday morning. Hey, man. Good luck. as well with our excellent PBS technical crew bringing you all the action tonight. And please join us for the exciting Snake River game at 10.30 a.m., Snake River versus Weezer on Saturday morning. We'll be back. Presentation of the 1990 Milk Bowl, Idaho High School Boys Football Championships on Idaho Public Television is made possible by the United Dairymen of Idaho, proud sponsors of sound nutrition through real dairy products. Additional support is provided by the Friends of Four, Ten, and KUID. Your public television dollars bringing you state championship football action. And we are ready for the second half kickoff for Pocatello. A deep, high kick. It's Treadwell from the six. And he will not make the 20. The Pocatello special teams coming through well, number 46. Ryan Phillips, the man on that one, and Treadwell again waiting for the blocking to develop. Unfortunately, the defense developed uh, for Pocatello, and Treadwell had nowhere to go, and this is the worst field position that Centennial's had all night long, starting out at its own 19-yard line. From the start, Pocatello's defense wanted to control the tempo of the game. Thus far, they have not. We're tied at 14. Christensen with first and 10 from the 19-yard line. Will pitch. It's D'Amico with room to run. Very shifty. Breaks, tackles, and finally up to the 39-yard line. It was number one, Tony Gutierrez. Gutierrez, excuse me, the cornerback dragging down Tony D'Amico. Gutierrez. A 20-yard pickup, Jerry. Gutierrez has made big plays all year long, and D'Amico, just like we saw in the first half, has the ability to break a big one off. Well, he did there. Unfortunately for Centennial, he didn't go all the way. Treadwell will get one. Locked up by number 75 for Pocatello, Jeremy Reed on the defensive end. And that'll set up a second and 10, or a second and nine from the 41. Chris Treadwell, the junior running back, has had a big first half, snuffed on his first carry. Corey Christensen, starting in his senior year for the Centennial Patriots. On second down, the counter is wrapped up. Wally Waller tore through the offensive line 
and was not fooled in the slightest as they shut down what has been a big play for Centennial. Wally Waller, almost like he was in the Centennial huddle on that play, almost like he was part of the Centennial offense. He almost got there before the football did. Now that play designed to run away from Waller to the other side of the field. He was so quick into the backfield, he grabbed Treadwell at the hand before the handoff. Excellent defensive play in the line from Waller. It's third and 13. That was a loss of five. Christensen looking, broken up, but there will be pass interference on the play. The intended receiver, Greg Allen, was hit before the ball arrived. Gutierrez getting flagged for pass interference. That's a good call. That is a good call by the officials. The home crowd didn't like it, but Gutierrez was over the back of the intended receiver before the football got there. You always, you always try to time it just right, but Gutierrez was just a little bit early. Jim Cutter obviously is going to side with the hometown fans, but Gutierrez, at least in my opinion, got there before the football. And Cutter has called an official over to the sideline to hear what this is. interference he says it's first down across the 50 centennial now on the pocatello 49 yard line with a fresh first down cutter arguing that Gutierrez going for the football still there are certain things you cannot do to go to the football and go through the back of the receiver is one of them christensen will give it's D'Amico wrapped up by number 56 Millward, number 55, is the one that got in on that tackle. And uh, he just shot the gap on that. And again, the defense for Pocatello very quick coming off the line of scrimmage. And yet Centennial at midfield looking at second and long. Now we expect them to come up with a big play. They lose a yard at second and 11. Just underway here in the second half. 9.31, we're tied at 14. Motion and D'Amico. Wrapped up after a short gain. Some folks on the Pocatello sideline believing there was a little inadvertent movement before the snap of the ball, but the field is clear of flags, and Centennial comes away with a pickup of four. Well, D'Amico in the backfield uh, got a little jump on that, but he never left his stance, and they had the one count before the ball was snapped. And now Jim Cutter wondering about the officials and how they'll affect his team this half. Third and seven from the 47. It's high, it's over Allen. Coverage from number 22 for Pocatello. Now there's Sweet a Davy out there. Flag on the play, and I, I didn't see what happened. It was away from the football, and I don't know if a receiver got held up or not. We'll find out here from Reed Tucker. We're looking at defensive holding. That's exactly what happened. Well, well away from the play, and it looks like Gutierrez is upset again as the coaching staff okay. gives the plate to D'Amico. Holding on the defense, 10 yards, first down. And what happened again on that play, you could see Christensen throw the ball to a spot on the field and the receiver wasn't there. And according to the officials, he wasn't there because Gutierrez was holding it and he couldn't complete the route. Three, what you might say are questionable calls. None of them helping Pocatello's cause as Christensen marches up to the line with a first and 10 from the 37. Opening drive of the second half. And he pitches to his back to Miko, and this time it's Wally Waller asserting the Pocatello defensive front again. That's a loss of seven. Centennial had done a very good job of taking Waller out of the action in the first half. He's come back and established himself here early, and even though Centennial had a first and 10 at the Pocatello 37-yard line, Waller's made a couple of big plays in this drive, and if you let him establish himself, he's going to have an impact on the way Centennial has to call plays. Waller is very fast, and it's now second and 17. Christensen to get it back on the run. And he'll go down for a big loss back at the 45. Dave Millward on the blitz, joined by Jeremy Reed, number 55 and number 75 for Pocatello. And that is a huge loss over 10 yards. And after the penalties, 
moved Pocatello back. Spencer Perry also in on the sack, getting penetration after the penalties moved Pocatello the wrong way. Finally, Millard gets in there with Waller to move Centennial backwards. Third and 25. Christensen on a roll. He's got blockers. And he will get to the 45 and pick up maybe eight, not nearly enough for the first down. You know, that's a good call by Centennial to go with the keeper by Christensen. The Indians, you know they're going to be ready for a pass down the field. They're going to be some double coverage situations. And rather than make a mistake and throw an interception, now you're in a position to punt the football and pin the Indians down deep in their own territory. It looks like Christensen was upset. He felt perhaps he had what he needed to get the first down, but he won't. And the kick away now. And a fair catch by John Pierce at his own 12-yard line. Well, the Pocatello Indians will take over first and 10 as the defense has held Centennial without points on its first drive of the second half. Real key on this last drive for Pocatello's defense. The penalties went against the Indians. Centennial's had the football for half of the first quarter and no points to show for it. Now Pocatello gets it back, and if the offense keeps its intensity, the Indians could take control here. 6.40.52 to go in the second quarter. This is Burke. Excuse me, third quarter. Burke rumbles ahead for five. He's out over the 15 to the 17-yard line. Casey Burke, we've seen a lot of him catching the football tonight. He's had some big gains for Pocatello. They like to run him off tackle like that. They like to work him towards the outer fringes of the defense. He's not a big kid at 155 pounds. Can't withstand the punishment of running inside. Corey Staples now in in the offensive backfield for the Indians. Stan Hales checking off at second and six. And he'll swing out quickly to Curtis Hall. And that's a first down to the 25 for Curtis Hall. And he appears to have been a little shaken up on the play. Not a good sign for Pocatello. Jim Cutter doesn't want to see that from his senior wide receiver, the 150-pounder. And he's up and moving under his own power. Let's see if we can see what happened here. Hall did a great job slipping Geno Washington. Washington had him out here one-on-one, -on -one, and Hall just sidestepped him to the inside, made a good fake to the outside, got him off balance, and then he got tripped up and brought down, and uh, I think he just got his bell rung, probably. It looked like Butterworth was out there lead blocking, doing a good job on the open field blocking. It's first and 10 Pocatello now, 25-yard line. And it's Staples fighting through traffic to get back to the line of scrimmage and not much more. 47, Mike Cox putting the final lick on Staples, a little guy taking a hard shot there to get back to the line of scrimmage. And Staples actually took three hard shots, and a key that you always like to watch are the defensive players trying to knock down the running back or are they trying to wrap him up and bring him down? There was one hit, two, kind of a side tackle, and every, he was slipping off of everybody, kind of like a wet fish. Brad Turpin, number 16, with the final lick. Hales has a man. It's Burke. Across midfield, a flag is down. Burke down to the 38-yard line. Tackled by number 15, Tony, oh, excuse me, Gino Washington for Centennial. Casey Burke did a great job of making a catch there in traffic. The defender coming right over his back, and I'm not sure the penalty won't be against Centennial. That is the call. Interference against Centennial on top of this, and on the replay, I don't know uh, about the interference call. We'll get a They'll signal. decline it anyway, I'm sure. Get a signal momentarily. Pass interference on the defense. Declined. First down. So really it doesn't come into play because the Indians decline it. Another questionable, as you watch it on the replay, uh, it looked like it was a, a good, clean effort by the Centennial defender. And what you see there is Longson, number 11, on the replay. He was going for the football. He was risking giving up the big play to try and pick that ball off. And he did, indeed, miss the football. Burks comes up with a big gain. It's first and 10 from the 37. Staples going nowhere. He'll lose a yard. Kind of a misplay. I think the timing a little off for Pocatello on that one. Staples got there almost too fast, and Hales almost failed to get the football to him. 
Burton and Cox, the two linebackers, in to help punish Staples. He loses a yard and a half. They're back to the 38-yard line. Stan Hales has not done much this half, but oh, what a first half he had directing the Indians, getting it mostly done on himself. And he will roll. And look the other way. He's got Burke with blockers. Burke is on his feet to the 11-yard line, taken down by Chad Longson. But we've got trouble at midfield. Stan Hales is down, and there's a flag down at midfield as well. Casey Burke showing how to use his blocking. We'll take a look at this play and see what happens. If Hales stays in the picture, he does a good job of selling it and then goes back the other way with the screen. That's a great call, getting the defense going to the left and then coming back the opposite direction. And Burke makes a big play on it. And I think the penalty probably will go against Centennial and most likely a late hit. We're not able to see it, but I think Burke got nailed after he threw the football well after because Jim Cutter came all the way out onto the field. You can see, you can see that Stan Hales is on the sideline number 13. Pocatello will substitute in a quarterback. It will be Brett Davis, number four, taking the snap. Hales shaken up. They did get roughing the passer against Centennial, and now it's first and 10 from the 12 for the Indians. Staples is hit immediately. Mike Cox, number 47, on the stuff. Well, it's not going to take Stan Hales long to get back in the game. He just had to come over and compose himself, and I think Brett Davis is waiting actually to come off his jobs to come in hand the ball off and Hales comes back in and the crowd acknowledges his presence giving a little boost to Stan Hales shaken up two plays ago but getting almost 40 yards on the pickup on the screen pass to Burke plus, plus the penalty second and ten after no gain on the ground Hales will throw Got a man in the end zone. Touchdown, Shiloh Butterworth. There's a flag down on the play. I was just about to comment on how well the Pocatello offensive line and running backs did at picking up the blitz coming from Centennial. But now a flag down in the offensive backfield, and we'll have to wait and see. It may come back. Now, whatever Butterworth did in the beginning of that pattern, he sold the defensive back very well to some part of the move, and it is a touchdown. Roughing Butterworth the passer celebrates. again, roughing the passer against Centennial. As I was saying, Butterworth was open by about 10 steps in the back of the end zone, and Hale saw him breaking and immediately threw the ball to a perfect spot. And now Pocatello wondering what it will have to do to keep Centennial off its quarterback. Stan Hale's getting congratulations after taking a couple of hard shots. You can see him all taped up there on the gym. Jim Cutter never wanted to show much emotion, but his quarterback, you can tell, <laughs> is feeling pretty well right on now. The defense, decline, touchdown. Despite the roughing up, Stan Hales has led Pocatello to a 20 to 14 lead. So the Indians take their first lead of the game as the penalty is declined. In college, of course, you have the opportunity to uh, maybe assess that on the kickoff or on the point after try, but the Indians will try to kick it again with Curtis Hall, the holder, the snap a little better, and still the kick is no good. That's three for Pocatello. They do not want this game to come down to their kicking. Well, we got a lot of time left, and... Uh, Jim Cutter talking to the young man who snaps the football. That is number 72 for Pocatello. And uh, Spencer Perry. That's right. And Spencer, he says, you got to get that ball right back there. This time, Hall had to reach around to his right, not high, but come around almost behind him and grab the ball and bring it back. Our score with 310 left in the third quarter. Pocatello moving out on top 20 to 14. And Chris Treadwell will drop back deep to receive the kickoff from the Indians. Centennial has not seen the third quarter go the way it would have liked after going out to an early lead, leading by eight, 14 to six in the second quarter. Lee Newman's defense giving up the long drive before halftime, allowing Pocatello to tie it. 
And now with the kickoff, Pocatello leading 20 to 14. Treadwell drops the ball. Now he has room. And wrapped up at the 31. That looked like it could have been more. Number 28 on the stick. Mike Watson coming down to keep Treadwell from getting any more than 30 some yards on the return, about a 27 yard return. And sometimes those bobbled balls are dangerous. They throw off the coverage just enough that a shifty guy like Treadwell can make it happen. Hey, Treadwell takes a wounded turkey and turns it into a Thanksgiving dinner on that one. Out to the 32, first and 10. Christensen will throw, trying to come back six. He's got Allen at the 40. Taken down there by number 21, John Pearson, number 54. Brant Harlan from the linebacker spot. Greg Allen, the senior, one of the quicker receivers on this core and has had several fine catches tonight. Centennial going to the air on first and 10. The Patriots have to make sure the penalties don't kill them on this drive. It certainly hurt them on the last drive. Actually, it was the offensive breakdown not protecting Christensen last time. Here the draw, and Deathman taken down by number 55. And number 22. Brent, or Dave Millward, excuse me, was the first man to get there. And, and then uh, Sterling Squeak Davey. That Indian scoring drive, six plays, 87 yards, but 342 on six plays. That's very good usage of the clock if you were trying to eat time up. Another look at that draw play. There's Waller with a near miss. And then Davey comes in and Millward to wrap them up. It's third and two from the 40. Christensen has time to throw and he's got a man, number 47, that's Mike Cox, who started this game as a linebacker and has come into the offense now as perhaps a tight end. And he came across the field at the 50, at the 48 yard line and caught the Christensen bullet. Christensen doing a great job here, just a short roll and throwing on the run. Cox wide open, he puts the ball right where it needs to be. Pierce up to make the stop. They needed two, they got eight, and Cox now on the sideline taking a breather. Even the Pocatello cheerleaders wondering what was that guy doing in the offense. <laughs> One fourteen left to go in the third quarter. Centennial down for the first time tonight, 20 to 14. And driving from the 47 with a first and 10. Allen out far to the right in the near part of your picture. Christensen will hand it to Miko on the draw, and he's got six yards up the gut over midfield, tackled by number 75, Jeremy Reed. Wally Waller again had a good shot at D'Amico, and Waller not able to get him wrapped up in his arms. It looked to me like he's going to pull him down at the line of scrimmage. D'Amico showing he may be what they need on the draw play right now with a little more shiftiness. Waller has a shot at him, and it's finally Reed coming off the defensive end spot to finish him off. Pocatello's defensive line doing a better job getting a hold of the Centennial running backs. Second and five. Christensen on the roll going long and it's picked off by Gutierrez. Well, Gutierrez has had trouble tonight. Two pass interference penalties against him in this quarter alone. He's a tough kid, he didn't back off. Some other kids may have been gun shy going after the football in that situation. He was there all alone with Lee Scott and he went after the football. And I think that's a reflection of the entire Pocatello program and Jim Cutter's attitude about this team. Jim Cutter has a lot of faith in Gutierrez and the other defensive backs. And you can see that Christensen has a man open for a moment, but Gutierrez closes the gap and then steps right in front of Scott. And now Pocatello going long. The ball missed by Avery Griggs, broken up by Chad Longson. Pocatello quickly on the attack. Joel Galloway was back there with the coverage along with Longson. And that is the end of quarter number four. Pocatello leads Centennial 20 to three, excuse me. Quarter number three, Pocatello leading 20 to 14. 
Well, a big quarter extra point. We've seen three of them tonight by the Indians. That could be a big, big key here if Pocatello isn't able to score again. The Indians will start on their 26 now with a first and 10 for Stan Hales, having been roughed up the last two series. And he will throw on first down, back the other way. It's Van Sickle to the 38. And he runs away from some of the coverage and picks up 14 yards on the little swing. Same play we saw before in the last drive when Hales rolled to his right and then came back to Casey Burke. This time he rolls left and comes back to Van Sickle coming out of the fullback spot. And Van Sickle just barely slipped the tackle and turned it into a big play. Not great speed, but uh, boy, he got the football and Hales did a great job of executing again, taking the defense with him and leaving Van Sickle out there. And Van Sickle was fortunate that time. He was pretty well covered by number 56, Randy Amaretta. And uh, Amber... And more Bietta, excuse me, and more Bietta, had he been looking at the football, could have picked that screen pass off. Instead, it's a big game for Pocatello, their first and 10 from the 38. To Butterworth at the sideline. He takes a shot from Galloway and goes out of bounds after picking up nine. That is a big time catch by the sophomore right there double covered number 49 and number 22 they had him he knew he was going to get hit the football thrown high he had to extend himself to catch the ball and still hung on to it even though he took the hard shot Matt Jarvis with the short coverage Joel Galloway came along number 22 and applied the finishing blow but Butterworth hangs on for Jim Cutter who now looks at second and two and to give up the middle Wrapped up before midfield. Van Sickle carried on that and a very nice tackle. I'm not sure exactly who got it. I think it was number 70, Isaac Naylor for Centennial, who was uh, actually fought his way from underneath some blockers to make that stop. They're going to say that Van Sickle did not pick up the first down. Now they'll bring out the chains to measure it. Van Sickle going for a little extra effort to try and wiggle forward. He's within inches of another Pocatello first down the ball just over the 48 yard line. Some of the Pocatello reserves looking on and it's a first down for the Indians. <laughs> 10 47 to go in the ball game. The Indians leading by six and driving now ready to cross midfield. And the Pocatello bench and the cheerleaders, Jerry, wondering if they'll become the first team to defend a state title under the new playoff system. On the far sidelines, the Centennial coaching staff and players trying to get their group of fans back into the game and try to have an effect on what's taking place here. They know the Patriots are down right now. They know that emotion is with Pocatello, and they want those fans to get in there and be that 12th man and try to help out. We do have a timeout on the field called by the Indians. Now, why, Jerry, what did we see there that would force the, po the uh, Indians and probably also a chance to do a little motivating and to just remind the Indians what exactly lies ahead for them on this drive, a chance to win the football game or at least put it away. You can see Mystery and Masterpiece Theater will be shown in, in their entirety after tonight's coverage of A1 Division I Championship football. The Pocatello Indians now regrouped and with first and 10 at midfield. Hales will roll. He's got pressure from Batista. He throws over the middle to Curtis Hall who gets wrapped up by the linebackers Cox and Burton after picking up the first down and a little bit more. He's over the 40. And we've got another two flags thrown on the play. One very, very late. I believe number 54 for Centennial is going to get nailed again for hitting Stan Hales late well after this play was completed. Hales such an excellent runner and does such a, such a good job throwing off the run that he really can wait for things to open up and give his receivers like Hall time to get open. On the defense, illegal forward pass on the offense, offset, repeat the down. Uh-huh. 
Hales ran a little too well. He was over the line of scrimmage when he let that one go to Hall. Well, it's interesting. That was the second flag. That was the late one that came in after the line judge determined that Hales had indeed gone past the line of scrimmage when he let go of the football. Because Kyle Battisti beside himself after the play thinking, oh no, what have I done? And then as the players were all walking away, the second flag was dropped and it had been determined Hales had gone too far. Well, we just do it over again. The only thing that's different is that uh, some time's run off the clock and with just over 10-10 left to go, the Indians still have a first and 10. Stan Hales marches up behind his center. Ryan Fleischman snapping the ball tonight. Quick drop, now Hales takes off. And tough to bring down, it's finally Charlie Burton, number 38, who can get Hales to the turf, but not after he picks up, not until he picks up six yards and moves the ball across midfield to the Centennial 45. Straight quarterback draw all the way on this. Hales gives a little look to the outside to freeze that cornerback out there and just in case he needs a little extra time and can get to the outside. And Burton met Hales about four yards downfield there and then his own pursuit came up and kind of knocked Burton off the running back or off the quarterback. Now Hales will run again. And he shakes loose down to the 40. That'll be enough for a first down where his forward progress stops. Randy Amorabadia, the one that comes in and makes that stop. And uh, again, Hales able to get the first down. This time, Hales did want to throw the football. He went back. He gave it the quick look. But he saw that he had some room, and he figured, hey, first down, why not? He's done such a good job running tonight. Hales has to be confident right now that if he needs five or six yards and he doesn't see it open, that he can do it on his own. And Jim Cutter has certainly given him the green light to do that. One of the things he felt Stan had really come along with this year was making the decision of when to pull the football down and when to run for first down yardage. And Hales has got first and 10 from the 45. This is Staples around the outside. Galloway wraps him up at the 32-yard line, close to another first down. Corey Staples, again, doing a good job of reading blocks. He's a, just a little water bug, scoots to the outside, and he got a key block from number 80, Curtis Hall. Hall was able to hold up that defensive back out there and allow Staples to get to the outside. And that gave Pocatello seven yards on the play, a second and three. And again, I'm very impressed with the way that these running backs tonight from both teams are reading their blocks. Some guys just stick too aggressive and make mistakes. These guys are picking up extra yards because they're smart. A lot of experience on both sides of the ball, especially in championship play. Pocatello clapping. It looks like offsides against Centennial. Well, we'll see. The, the officials always want to check and make sure that they weren't drawn offside, as one of the Centennial players is trying to say was the case. Charlie Burton uh, in there lobbying, as all good football players do, may have a future in law. You never know. We'll check it with Reed Tucker and see what the call is. We have a dead ball foul, illegal procedure on the offense, hey, five yards. Uh, give Burton his first trial win. Boy, it's tough to see in that replay any movement. But down on the field, somebody in white may have had just the slightest flinch, and that's really all it takes is for one of the Indian offensive linemen or someone in the backfield to even move a hand before the snap count when things are supposed to be set. Uh, anything that could be construed to try and draw the defensive line offside is illegal procedure and cutter. Not happy with the officiating here in the second half. He leads 20 to 14, the Indians, on the 38-yard line, second and seven. Hales will go down back at midfield. Charlie Burton dragging him across. And, and Burton, the boos ring down. Burton adding insult to injury to Pocatello there. He wins the argument on the penalty, the play before. Then he comes in and makes the big sack. Indian fans not happy uh, with the fact that after he got Stan Hales down, he drug him for a step or two but uh, the officials feeling not enough to warrant a flag on a late hit, and we've seen three flags on late hits against Centennial already against Stan Hales. Very effective call for Centennial to send Burton on the blitz. They know Hales wants to roll out and throw, and on second and seven, that's exactly what he did. It's now third and 17. 
Long to Burks. It's overthrown. Great job by Casey Burke of fooling the defensive man. Burke snuck out to the sideline, and the whole Pocatello sideline is uh, really frustrated right now. Stan Hales had a tough time on that. He felt a little pressure and actually was not set when he threw the football. He just put it up for grabs out there, knowing that if Burke could get under it, he would. Casey couldn't quite get there. And an unfortunate time to overthrow because Burke had no one within 20 yards of him. Butterworth now will do the punting. Just gets off a beautiful spiral kick, and that will roll through into the end zone. Hey, yes. great, great job of... Looks like Wally Waller, number 71. Well, the defense has to go out and do the job right now. Centennial takes over, first and 10. And stuffed at the line of scrimmage. D'Amico carried that. He had absolutely nowhere to go. Obviously, Waller wasn't the one talking to Coach Cutter because Waller's the one that made the stop on that play. Cutter perhaps talking to one of his offensive linemen. Treadwell will talk to the Brain Trust. Lee Newman in his first year as the head coach at Centennial High. He spent two years as the linebacker coach. Taking over for Greg Drake, who moved to Centennial after last year, who moved to Coeur d'Alene, excuse me, after last year's championship game. Second and ten and a half. Christensen has plenty of room. Now he hits Scott at the 27, a pickup of seven. And some late flags as Scott made the reception and was on the ground, and this could go late against Pocatello, Ryan Hedrick. I think Ryan uh, Hedrick, the strong guard for Centennial, may have come in and made a late hit after the play. And Christensen really p paid the price as he let go of the football on that as well. Scott doing a good job of standing in the traffic, holding his ground and making the catch at the 37. They have not moved the down marker, and here's the call. That's what it was, number 60, Hedrick came in after the play had been blown dead and knocked down a Pocatello defender, and that's what the flag was all about. And, you know, young men are out here. They've geared themselves for this game all season long, and it's frustrating no matter which side of the ball you're on. You're into the game so much, almost into it too far, you don't hear the fans, you don't hear the whistles. And it's not like you're going out there trying to do it on purpose, but you just don't hear the whistle. You go in and you hit somebody, and there's that yellow marker. Really hurt Centennial. They've got a... Third and 16 yeah. now. They're inside their own 15-yard line. And some kind of snafu around the ball has the referees consulting. Now the sideline marker on the field says third and 16. The scoreboard says second and 16, and I think the officials are trying to sort that out. It is third down, third and 16. They'll change the scoreboard, and the Patriots in a hole at their own 14. Christensen will stay on the line of scrimmage to take the snap. Fakes the draw. He's under pressure. Has a man downfield. It's Allen at the 27. And a 12-yard pickup. They needed 15 for the first down. A big play by Christensen on that to get away from the rushing defensive lineman and find Allen, who made a great catch, still short of the first down. Now, fans may wonder on that last play, how come Centennial didn't get the down over again? It was second down when the penalty was called against him because it was a dead ball penalty. It came after the second down play had been blown dead. The Pocatello defense standing on oh. the, just over the 30, and it looks like he got what it took for the first down. Getting a hug from Deathman. A gutsy call, and they works for Centennial. They are still alive with a first and, first and 10 from the 31. What a big play right there, and the tackle almost made in the backfield. Uh, we couldn't see who it was that got slipped in, but a big play by D'Amico to keep his feet. Patriots wasting no time getting back to the line of scrimmage. You can see 47, Mike Cox in at the tight end. Short drop. 
Thrown underneath to Allen. They will wave that one off. It will be second and 10. Well, Lee Newman didn't agree with that call. He came off the sidelines a little bit. Allen doing his best. Christensen, I think, feeling a little bit of the pressure. Now he has to go to the air. We've only got 6.06 left on the scoreboard clock, and that's all there is in the game. Centennial able to put up a couple of scores in the first half, and they've been shut out here by Pocatello in the second half. Allen has had an outstanding game, but the Pocatello defensive front has started to establish itself here in the third and fourth quarters. Second and 10 from the 30. On the option, it's on the ground now, D'Amico picks it up. And he'll turn nothing into something as he gets ahead five yards to the 35. And oh, did Christensen take a lick at the beginning of the play and D'Amico got popped at the end. Wally Waller was the man that really forced all of that to happen and we've talked about him. He's He's controlled the line of scrimmage in the second half. He's the one that hit Christensen as he went to pass the football off and lateral it back, and that forced a bad toss, and still D'Amico able to get some plus yards out of it. That is as lucky a bounce as you can get. Millard made the stop on D'Amico. It's third and five. The short drop again. Christensen has Allen in traffic. Did he hang on? A fantastic catch. He was drilled almost as soon as he touched the ball. Greg Allen made a super catch on that play. Again, up in the air, waiting for the football. He's in traffic. He knows that there's somebody who's going to hit him as soon as the football gets there, if not sooner. And he just does a super job of watching that football right into his hands for another first down. Squeak Davey put the lick on Allen, but Allen bobbled and hung on for the first down. Centennial now out over the 42-yard line with a first and 10 for Christensen. And Christensen goes down in the hands of Millward coming on the blitz from the inside linebacker spot. Christensen loses six yards back to the 35. Time really now going against Centennial. The Patriots have two timeouts left, but we just have over four and a half minutes left to play, and they're not moving the football. They are looking at second and 16 now, and uh, they're going to have to throw the ball from this, here on out. This is exactly what Pocatello wants to do to Centennial. Look for the blitz. They want to pressure Christensen. And he throws. He's got Allen again. Short gain out to the 42. It will be third and 10. Pierce and Brant Harland on the stop. Pocatello leads 20 to 14. Greg Allen has been all the offense for Centennial in this drive with just under four minutes to go in the football game. Centennial trying to make it past midfield and then on into the end zone. The Pocatello defense getting it done from the 43. This is wide to D'Amico. He wants to throw. Now he's going to tuck it down and knocked out of bounds at the line of scrimmage. Call it one. Squeak Davy over there with a lick on him as well as Jeremy Reed. The only plus that came out of that play was the fact that the Patriots were able to get out of bounds and stop the clock. We'll be, we'll be bringing you A2 state championship football coverage Saturday morning at 10.30 a.m. on public television. That's 9.30 a.m. in the Pacific time zones. Snake River versus Weezer. And on fourth and seven, the fake punt for Centennial. It's Turpin. Stop short at midfield. Well, the and ball, a scramble for the ball. The ball was fumbled. It really doesn't matter who recovers unless Pocatello recovers and then fumbles the ball back to Centennial. That didn't happen. The Indians will take over on downs at midfield. And if Stan Hales can just come out and do his job, Pocatello is going to have back-to-back -back championships with just 319 to go. The Indians lead it 20 to 14. They needed eight, they got six. Dave Millward recovered the fumble for Pocatello. Spencer Perry was down for a moment, but the Pocatello Indians could go all the way. A big block downfield from Butterworth. Knocked out of bounds at the eight-yard line. Casey Burke. Centennial's free safety. 
or cornerback Gino Washington, the man who knocked Burke out of bounds at the eight. I'm oh. surprised they haven't told him he needs to fix his jersey. What a time for a big play. Stan Hale's a little simple handoff. Burke slips the tackle in the offensive backfield, and then it's just him and his blockers the rest of the way. Look he at got the block good, by Butterworth. A great block from Butterworth. Curtis Hall was out there to slow some people down, and Burke just gets inside the 10, and the Indians can wrap it up if they get it in the end zone here, barring a miracle. First and goal. Staples to the three. A pickup of four for Corey Staples, getting a lot of playing time, rotating in with Burke at the tailback slot. One real key in the game in the second half is that Pocatello has taken Treadwell out of the Centennial offense. We haven't heard from him since he took the opening kickoff. This is Staples again. Close to the goal line, no signal. 2.10 left and counting. Staples just short of the goal line. And Jim Cutter is standing in control of the football game now with his team knocking on the door. The Pocatello Indian offense has marched from midfield to the half yard line in three plays. And the home crowd cheering for the touchdown to put it away on third and goal. Staples, touchdown. Three straight carries for Corey Staples. And he has given the Indians a 26 to 14 lead. Good blocking up front, the lead block. Indians for two. Hales will hit his man, Avery Griggs, takes a shot in the end zone, but has two, and the Indians have doubled the score. Avery Griggs on the two-point conversion, 205-pound senior, and it's now 28 to 14. The Indians in control on their home field at Holt Arena. Leading the Patriots by 14. You're watching championship football on Idaho Public Television. And Jim Cutter now feeling calm inside. Breathing deeply. And looking to run a minute 37 off the clock to become the first coach to win back-to-back -back A1 Division I titles since they went to the state championship format in 1978. Number eight, Thor Conley will kick off for the Indians. The low squib fielded by Cox. Cuts his way back to the 37 and taken down there. Shane Sistrunk on the tackle for Pocatello as Cox, with a little raspberry on his elbow, limps his way off the field. And the crowd starting for the exits, feeling that this game is wrapped up, but the loyal ones will stay for the celebration sure to follow. As Centennial has a minute and 14 seconds to make up 14 points. Christensen swings out to Allen, who loses the ball. Perhaps anticipating the hit from number 22, Squeak Davy. And the excitement growing on the Pocatello bench. They're talking repeat in Pocatello. That man, Jim Cutter, has led his Indians to a 10-1 record this year. The only loss to Idaho Falls in late season. Christensen over the middle to D'Amico. And D'Amico finally knocked down at the 43-yard line of Pocatello, Squeak Davy, part of the tackling contingent. 
Also in on the stop, number 20, Josh Naylor, D'Amico. Pocatello with five men, now six on the line, crowding up against Christensen. Well, he's going nowhere, wrapped up at the nine. Jeremy Reed, the first man to get a hold of him. You see number 72, Spencer Perry getting some help. He played most of the game in the offense. With 44 seconds on third and goal. Christensen underthrows his man, Allen, at the goal line. Covered there by Gabe McMaster. Two timeouts left. Greg Allen, the intended receiver. It's now fourth and goal for the Patriots. And Allen would dearly love to get one last touchdown catch in his high school career. Way into the goal line. It'll be fourth and goal from the four. Christensen will throw for it. Scott has the ball go through his hands in the corner. Pocatello will take over, and that, my friends, has just about taken care of it. Josh Naylor back with the coverage. 34 seconds left. The Indians will take over inside their own 10-yard line, but leading by a pair of touchdowns. Stay with us right after the game. We will go down the field for interviews. Jerry Miller fighting his way through the crowd piled up behind the Pocatello bench to gather first-hand insight after what seems to be a sure Pocatello victory in the state championship football game in 1990. The Indians to just run out the clock. Stan Hales has had a superb game leading the offense. Roughed up a bit in the third quarter, but has surely done his job starting with the touchdown he scored with six seconds left just before halftime. Pocatello players that will come off in victory. Twenty-eight seconds left, one timeout for Centennials. Stan Hales will squat on the ball. Back near his own goal line, some pushing and shoving going on. And with 19 seconds left, it does not appear Centennial will lose, will use its last timeout. And the crowd will count down the final 10 seconds to a Pocatello State Division 1A1 championship. The Pocatello Indians are state champions in 1990. Your final score from Holt Arena, Pocatello 28, Centennial 14, the Indians finished.